Hello guys, welcome back to TechDose and in this video we will see how to find all the factors of a given number. Uh, now let's take an example in order to understand it. Uh, let, let's say that the given number n is equals to 10. Uh, if we have to find out all the factors it will be 1, 2, 5, 10 uh, because these are the numbers which can divide 10. Okay, a simple method to find this is just iterate over all the numbers from 1 to n and check if the given number i can actually have a remainder equals to 0 when you take the remainder with n right if it is true then we are required to print this number in this case uh, the time complexity will be order of n because we are iterating through all the numbers from 1 to n now we can do much better than this in order to understand this uh, let's take another example let's say that n is equals to 36 now if we can just enumerate all the factors of n it will be 1 2 3 4 6 9 12 18 and 36 if i can just represent all of these in the number line okay so i have shown all the factors on the number line from 1 to 36 i have marked them all now if you know that n divided by a that is if you take the remainder of n when divided by a and if it comes out to be equals to 0 then, then you can say that a can divide n and you will have the quotient equals to b okay if this is true uh, then you can write it in another way that a into b will be equals to n right and this will always be true if a can divide n then b can also divide n and you can write it in such a way that n by b will be equals to a or you can say n mod of b will be equals to zero right this is like pretty much obvious and therefore with this you know that the factors will always exist in pair factors always exist in pair you know and this is the proof of it i will again show you the proof on the next page uh, using some counter examples now in this case if factors always exist in a pair then what we can see is if 36 can be divided by 1 uh, then you get a number as 36 so you see that the pair of 1 is 36 right you can also write 36 by 36 and you will get 1 right now if you divide uh, 36 by 2 which you know that 2 is a factor of 36 then you can write 36 by 2 and it will give you 18 or you can also just rearrange this and say that 36 by 18 is equals to 2 and you see that the pair of 2 is 18 right in the similar way you will find that the pair of 3 is 12 the pair of 4 is 9 now 6 is a special case since 36 is a perfect square therefore 6 can divide it which is actually the square root of 36 right so only when the number is a perfect square uh, the square root of that given number uh, can divide it without even having a pair because the pair will be the uh, square root of n itself right other than that if you take any other non-perfect square then it will always exist in unique pair okay so i think this makes sense and if you have understood this uh, let's make another statement like if a multiplied by b is equals to n and if a is less than square root of n then it is guaranteed that b will be greater than square root of n and let's prove it by counter example let's say that a is less than square root of n and a can divide n and when you divide n by a you got b okay and let's assume that b is also less than square root of n so if you multiply a with b then you will get a number less than n because a was uh, less than square root of n and b was also less than square root of n so if you multiply this it will be less than n so it will not be equals to n right so if this statement is true uh, then if a number a is less than square root of n then b has to balance it off and b has to be greater than square root of n so this statement can be wrong isn't it and also if if you assume it in the other way around that a is greater than square root of n and b is greater than square root of n then if you multiply a b it will be greater than n and again if if this is true and if uh, n mod of a is 0 that means if you divide n by a you get b then this will be wrong b has to be less than square root of n okay so there always has to be a balance if a is equals to square root of n it is only possible if n is a perfect square then b will also be equals to square root of n and this is the only case where a and b will not be unique in all other cases it will be unique so i hope uh, now it makes sense that if i have to find out all the factors uh, of a given number n then what i need to do is i just need to check till square root of n and i can always find the other pair on the other side because let's say that the given number n is was equals to 36 let's say a was equals to 3 how did i determine this i was checking if n mod of a equals equals 0 and if this is equals to true 
uh, then I know that a is a factor of n. How to find the other factor? You can just uh, calculate it by doing n by a and you will find the b value. Okay. So if you do 36 by 3, you will find 12. Okay. So you actually do not need to iterate for any of the values uh, beyond the square root of n and therefore you can find all the factors from 1 to square root of n. Okay. Let's now look at the code. I would like to announce about our live training programs, data structures and algorithms, which is interview dose and system design, which is design dose. If you are looking for making a switch from service to product based or even make a product based to product based top tier switch and aiming for your dream company, this is the best curriculum you can ever join. I'll be your mentor throughout the cohort and I will help you clear all your doubts in the one on one sessions. You can know more about this by querying us on the WhatsApp number or you can also visit our website techdose.co.in. The code is very simple i equals 1 to i into i less than equals to n. This means i is less than equals to square root of n. So finding the square root is more complex and rather writing it in this way that i into i is less than equals to uh, n is much better. Okay. So that's why I have written it in this way. And you need to check if i is a factor of n. And if that is true, I will be printing i. And now, uh, since we want to print all the unique factors, I don't want to repeat the square root of n, right? So I will check if i is not equals to uh, n by i. And this will always be true. Like i will be equals to n by i only when i is a square root of n. Okay. In all other cases, this statement will hold true and n by i will get printed. Okay. So the time complexity of this is order of square root of n. And the space complexity is order of one. So this is the optimal approach of finding all factors of a given number n. I hope you were able to understand it. Please like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of these programming videos. See you guys in the next video. Thank you.